Coach, take your questions. I'm going to some other stuff after that. Sure, appreciate it. Again, as always, appreciate you guys coming out, joining us today. Uh, kind of recap the Towson game. As I said after the uh, game on Saturday, I thought the energy and effort was where we would want it to be. Um, but obviously, uh, there's still some things that we got to get cleaned up, which we expected. It's always great to be able to clean things up with a win. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, it was great to be able to play. A bunch of guys uh, we were able to play on, in all three phases, uh, pretty a good amount of our team. And, and anytime you're able to do that, that's uh, very beneficial for us down the road. So um, there's some things that we'll continue to clean up this week. Uh, as per normal um, for a team, you usually see that big jump between game one to game two, and we're very hopeful um, now that we've got a game under our belt, some things that we need to get corrected. Uh, we'll be able to get corrected and executed better in week two. Um, Charlotte's coming in, a national TV game here in the Shell at night. A uh, familiar opponent that we played a year ago. Um, obviously, they've got a new coaching staff that we're very familiar with, uh, Coach Poggi, uh, who I don't just call an opponent. Uh, he's also a dear friend. Coached my son in high school. My son Kai played for Biff Derrick Gilman. So I've known Biff for a long, long time and, and got a lot of respect for him. And the job he does as a coach in developing young men. Um, I know our fans will come out and create the environment that we want to have for a, a Saturday night national TV game. And we're very hopeful that we can pack the shell. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to, to take the next step as a program um, and, and show our, our Terps fans what we're all about as we continue to create an identity uh, for us this year. Um, our game captains this week Charlotte native, uh, DJ Glaze, uh, Jeremy Spragans, and Corey Deitches will serve as our, our game two uh, captains. We're looking forward to those guys leading us. And then uh, with that, I'll open up to whatever questions you guys have. Start on your right with uh, Dave. Mike, you had a chance to play a lot of offensive linemen last Saturday. And as you move forward and as you look to get this whole line in shape for Big Ten play, what things were you looking for last Saturday and what questions were answered on a micro and a macro level? Yeah, you know, going into it, obviously, we had a couple of missing pieces there that, that had been available to us most of training camp. And we're hopeful that we're able to get, you know, Gotti back this week, possibly, which will again allow us to, to kind of solidify some things there. I thought for the most part, the O-line did a, a decent job. Um, you know, their quarterback got sacked on the last play of the game. Uh, gave up one sack. When you watch the tape, it seems as though there were pressure. There was pressure, especially interior pressure for our quarterback early on. But after you know you review it, you see it, that's just a, some of that is an example of our quarterback who doesn't give up on plays. And when Leah tries to extend plays, there are times that maybe he puts himself in harm way. And what we want to do is continue to coach him how to help protect himself as well as. You know, our line to understand that we do have a guy back there that if you allow him to extend things, usually good things happen. Um, you know, as coming out of that first game, we have a pretty good understanding now of, of, of what those guys do in game. And so this week we'll try to maybe solidify it a little bit, maybe not have as much of the substitution there and, and give guys a chance to jail and, and come together. But it was good to be able to play a lot of them a week ago to give us an opportunity to evaluate them in in-game situations. Hey, hey, Coach. Uh, I know you had talked about uh, just playing a lot of players, obviously, but going into this upcoming week, you know, uh, there'll be some familiarity with the roster. Obviously, uh, I believe it's six players uh, who played here last year who are now in Charlotte. Um, but when you watch game one, what kind of jumped out, whether it's from, you know, from a player perspective or a kind of scheme? Yeah, you know, game one for them, um, you know, I, I don't coach their team, but it looked like they, they didn't show a lot. I mean, they didn't have to necessarily, I guess, get into uh, too deep into their game plan. You know, when you watch the tape, I think they had 68 snaps on defense and um, they were in some base man free stuff. But when you do your research as we've done over the summer, you know, with our summer scouting report, you know, we expect them, expect them to play more split safety than maybe post safety stuff that they showed a week ago. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, again, they were very limited game plan. They were able to get their stuff executed. You know, if you know Biff, you know he wants to run the football. He wants to play downhill. He's kind of one of those guys that wants to make it a tough, gritty game. And, and that's what we expect. 
uh, you know, again, the familiarity. Obviously, they've got Mike Miller, a former assistant here, who's been in, in, been with me for some time. And, you know, there are there is some familiarity from a personnel standpoint. You look across their roster, and they've got, I want to say, 25, 30 guys from Power Five institutions. So they've been able to to flip their roster, and you know, they've got some really talented players in, in, in all three phases. Mike Wright, Sean. Hey, coach. Um, so with Coach Poggi, can you kind of elaborate on your relationship with Biff and how it's evolved over the years? You know, you mentioned Kai and Gilman and everything. Just um, what's that relationship like with Biff? Yeah, I've known Biff probably since about 1997, 98, when I came here as a young assistant and he was uh, coaching over at Gilman. Uh, we recruited his school for some time. Uh, when I came back here in 2012, you know, my son ended up going to Gilman. And, Played three years there for Coach uh, Poggi, and he did a tremendous job uh, creating value for my son. Where he was able to sign with Texas, coming out of high school, and uh, great education there at Gilman. And Biff is one of those guys that's similar to myself. He's not just about uh, developing them as football players, but developing them as people. And I know he develops really strong relationships. And through that, he and I become you know great friends as well as obviously now um, competitors. And looking forward to it. I know he'll have his team ready. Uh, to come play up here. It's kind of a homecoming for him and some of the players on his roster. Uh, when you look across and see the amount of guys that are, are there with him that he had in high school, uh, and, and those guys were really good players. So um, we expect him to come up and, and, and give us his best, and, and he can expect to get ours. Yeah, I coach on the What's up, partnership uh, between the Big Ten and NBC is a new thing this year. I guess they're going to have the pregame show here this weekend. Uh, what do you think it's Means, I guess, for the for the league and for your program to have this sort of new primetime national TV slot. To play. Yeah, you know, all of our partners are, are equally important. I think, obviously, with this time slot being a national TV time slot, um, it's good for Maryland. It's good for us to showcase the university. It's good for us to showcase the the things that we have here in the DMV area. So we're excited about the opportunity. Um, you know, NBC. It, takes the place of some of the other partners maybe we've had down the past, but I know this, uh, the guys that are, are calling it for them are professional well, they call games really well, and they'll, they'll do their due diligence. And I know as a conference, we're excited about being able to, to have the NBC as a major partner for us. Hey, Michael, third straight game without allowing a touchdown, just what are some of the factors that have gone into that and how much optimism does that provide you as you get into the early part of the season? You know, I think it's any time you're able to, the goal on defense is to limit scoring. And, you know, this past weekend, we were able to hold them to two field goals and we gave up some yardage there to, but we dug in our heels there once they crossed into the red zone area. Uh, I think it's a testament to the players uh, coming into it. We felt that our defense, we had a chance to be pretty good on defense because of the front seven. Um, it was great with the additions of guys like Jaquan Shepard, uh, you know, being able to come fill in and, and fill some boys and he played really well for so I think the defense is the strength of our team um, from the standpoint that you know we've got a lot of veteran leadership I think that side of the ball has quite a few uh, great leaders and, and and I think you know they start got a, got off to a fast start on defense and I'm hoping we're able to continue it through uh, this next game. Hey, right, second row, Sam. Hey, Coach, uh, Sam what's up? How you doing? Uh, just wondering, you know, in terms of this game, you know, having that national audience like you talked about, having a chance to showcase some of Maryland's traditions and kind of the DMV as, as you spoke about, how important is it to you to, you know, have those local ties to the, to the area, to the fan base, as, you know, you've talked about before, and, and now you're getting to put it on for a national audience, like a flag drop, whether it be, you know, you know, having Maryland just showcased in this type of spot. You know, as I said, you know, anytime you play a national TV game, it's great for the university, you know. I saw something come out where we ranked one of the top 30, 25 universities in the country. And, you know, when you bring a national TV audience to your campus, it, 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 you're able to illuminate the great things about being here in the DMV, you know, the fourth largest media market in the country. And so uh, it gives us an opportunity to really show um, what we have here. And so, like I said before, our, our players are excited. I'm excited about this partnership and to be able to play here. But obviously, we got to go do the work. and. Uh, do the things necessary to keep this excitement. Hey, Coach. Um, Taylor, what's up? What's going on? You said after the game Saturday that you were particularly impressed with Talia throwing deep and the trajectory on those balls and the accuracy of them. 
Was that something that you guys maybe worked on over the off season? And what were some things in particular that you did for him to improve in that regard? And how did you, you kind of accomplish that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, one of the questions I oftentimes get about Talia is what can he do to improve? And I think I've been on the record that, uh, you know, last year we left some, some plays on the field in the deep passing game, which was something that I think is a strength of his. You know, I attributed it last year to possibly just the timing. You know, when you think of the receivers we had a year ago, you know, the three starters were coming off of injuries where they missed spring ball. Dante Demas didn't practice in the spring. Rakim Jarrett didn't practice. Jacob Copeland was limited. And so uh, I don't think we ever really got the timing down. Um, and there were times where there were open guys and we missed hit or didn't, didn't hit them accurately. There were times where we maybe missed the read. Uh, so after you review and go through kind of the quality control of what we can do better, that was the one area in Leah's game that we thought we needed to improve. And so what you do is you go about figuring out, setting up individual drill work, uh, some of it is footwork for him in the back end and making sure that he's got his eyes in the right place and that the ball has the right trajectory where you throw guys open. Um, I thought Saturday, you know, obviously he had the big one that was dropped and then came back and, you know, had a couple of drops on some deep shots where I thought he threw the ball where we wanted it to be thrown with the type of trajectory. So uh, worked really hard. Josh, uh, you know, continues to drill him quite a bit and you see the uh, fruits of the work. Two or three more. We'll go back to on that. Hey, coach. I was going to ask about about Talia as well. I know um, you know it took, took a couple of hits, but you know just the guys behind him. You know Billy Edwards. He was able to come in and Cam Edge. You know that was his first career appearance. So um, how would you kind of maybe assess Talia just kind of maybe playing through you know some some of those big hits uh, in week one, and then uh, with Billy and uh, and Cam Edge and you know those, their appearances as well. Yeah, as I said earlier with Leah, you know some of these some of the hits he took, as you can see, were part of him extending plays. I mean. One of the things that you love about him is that he has the ability to extend. And one of the things that scares the mess out of you is when he does try to extend, sometimes he puts himself in harm's way. And, you know, as I said to him on the sideline, it's okay to give up on a play and play the next down. But I think every play, because of the competitiveness he has, he's trying to make everything work. You know, but as he continues to mature and, and he's really shown the ability, could have finished the game. We took most of the starters out after the first drive of the second half. I don't, there's nothing structurally. I mean, he got banged up. And when you play the game of football, the way Leah plays, sometimes he, he'll take some of these shots. And my goal is to uh, minimize them and eliminate them. And we'll continue to work with him on, you know, maybe not trying to make everything a touchdown. And throwaways are good. You know, I think he was 23 of 33, and he had seven drops and three throwaways. So. The accuracy is there. We just got to continue to work with him to help protect himself. And then we got to do a better job on the interior part of our protection, uh, where we solidify those A and B gaps to give him a little more time from a vision standpoint. Coach, uh, <clears throat> congratulations on the win. Thanks, bro. Uh, looking around the country, you saw Coach Prime with a huge upset. You saw Duke destroy Clemson. You saw FSU destroy LSU. You saw Indiana give Ohio State all they wanted. Where are you uh, going with this, Bruce? I'm going to go with Bell. No, I got a point. Right. You have had tremendous success in your first games of the year. And I think that you prepare for those early games better than any, or as well as anybody, okay? What has to happen for Maryland to get an Ohio State to come here for opening day or a Penn State? <laughs> uh, is that a matter of just the conference, or is that something you request? And have you thought about that? I've not thought about it. Um, I guess winning the opening game is, means I can hit the fastball, but I need to work on that curveball a little bit. Um, the, the conference makes our schedule. I put, we play whoever pops up on there, and you know we've been really fortunate that we've, we've had opportunities to have success early, which I think is great for a team that's in building mode like we are, because we want to try to get better with each game and. We all know we play a tough and play in a tough league, and, and so you want to build up to it and continue to uh, work through the kinks so that once we do hit conference play, which is a second season for us, we're hoping to be hitting on all cylinders. And so, you know, to be able to open up, I think it's great for the area when we play local teams like Towson, like Howard, and, and some of these teams here. I think it's always great to play regional rivalries like West Virginia, like Virginia. You know, I've shared my opinions with, with Colleen and, and with Damon in terms of scheduling from that standpoint. Uh, but, you know, we play them how they're uh, put on our schedule. Jerry Wright, 
Hey, Coach. 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 Hey, Coach.